So now let's understand how do you run a Eureka server. So basically we want to have something where different microservices will register themselves and then of course they can also search about each other. So let's say we have 10 microservices and then if one microservice wants to connect with another microservice, how will they search? So what we are going to do is we will create a server, a service discovery server, and then every client here will register itself. So they become a client and then we have a server. So which server we are going to use? There are multiple options, but then one of the most famous and common one is Netflix Eureka server. So what we are going to do is we will create a Eureka server. Now this is not that complex if you're thinking, hey, we have to write a lot of lines of code. Just follow me. In a few minutes, I will tell you how to create a Eureka server. So the first thing is you have to create a project. So you have to go to start.spring.io and here you have to select Maven project and Java. Of course you can go for Gradle as well, that's your choice. So we can see we are Java and then uh, the, this is a version and the group ID which we are following here is telecom.telisco and the artifact ID, and let's say I'm, I'm saying this is my service registry, okay? Uh, so this is my sub server basically. And then I want this to be jar and 17 version. Now what are dependencies we have to add? Only two dependencies basically. The first one is we want to run this project so we'll say this is web. And the second one is we need to create a Eureka server. So if you can see the, we have an option of Eureka server here, just select that. So this is basically a Spring Cloud Discovery. And that's it, we just need these two things and click on generate. And you can see we got our project, so let me just open this and unzip it. So unzipping done, let me open this project using IntelliJ IDEA, so I'm opening this. These are the projects we are working with. We got two microservices, question service and uh, the quiz service, right? Now the idea was when a quiz service want to create a quiz, it will use the question service. So there are two different services, right? And in order to search for the question service, we will need a Eureka server. So basically a question service will register itself to Eureka server and then a quiz service will be able to search it, right? So let me open that project now, the Eureka server project. So I will say open, downloads, service registry, open, and now we are opening our Eureka server project. So it will take some time for the dependencies and, okay, still doing it. So let's wait for that. So by the time it is downloading the dependencies, let me open the project and you can see the POM file, we have mentioned two things here. Uh, we need a web project and also we need a Eureka server. So both things are there. Let me close this. And if you go to SRC, you can see we have a service registry application. And then if you go to resource, we have application properties. So basically now, in order to make it work, we need to change two things, the application properties and the main application, right? Now, if you want to enable the Eureka server, once you've got dependency, that's your first step. So you have to add the dependency. The second step is you have to put an annotation here called enable Eureka server. That's it, so simple, right? So just by doing this, we are enabling the Eureka server. But we have to write some configuration. One of the thing is, what is the name of this Eureka server? In fact, going forward, we'll also name our services. Example, if you go back to your, uh, let's say question service, and in this, if you open your application.properties, you have to also mention the name of this particular service. So when you have multiple microservices, it's important to have a good name for it, right? So that you can search it. So we don't have a name yet, we'll do that later. But at this point, uh, what I will do is I will just go back to my service registry and let's make some changes here. The first thing you have to mention the name, you have to mention the port number it is going to run. So let's do that first. So it is spring.application.name. So this is a property and the value I'm going to set here is service registry. Okay, that's the first thing. The next thing we have to mention is a port number where this particular server will run. So it's a server.port. Even if you don't mention, by default, Eureka server runs on this server, which is 8761. Now, apart from this, we have to set three more properties. The reason being, when you talk about a client, a Eureka client, Eureka client going to register itself to the Eureka server, right? So let's say we have three things here. We got our Eureka server. We got two clients here, which is the uh, quiz service and the question service. Of course, these two services, the quiz and question, they are going to register themselves to the Eureka server. But what about the Eureka server? Do we want to register itself? Of course not, right? Eureka server should not be registering itself. And also, we also don't want to fetch the registry. So we'll make that false. And we also set the host name for it. So let's say, uh, to do that, we have to say eureka.instance.hostName, and the host name is localhost. The next thing we have to mention is about the fetch registry, and we'll make this false. And also, I don't want it to register itself, so I will say register with eureka false. 
Okay, so you have to mention these three things as well. So we don't want registry itself, and then uh, we don't want to fetch registry as well. And then we are specifying the host name, which is localhost. So that's it. Uh, we are registered now. We have also have a port number, and this this will make your Eureka server work. So let me try this. What I will do is I will just run this project. I hope this will work. So yeah, so it says it started, but which port number? So you can say just starting of port number. 876, and anyway, default was that, even if you don't mention. So how do I verify? So I can just simply go to my browser and just mention localhost colon 8761, and this is your Eureka server running. So you can see it says Spring Eureka, but if you see here, this is important for us, instance currently registered with Eureka. At this point, we don't have any microservice which has registered itself to Eureka server. They're not even running, right? So how do we make it connected? How do we make it work? So that's what we are going to see now. So let's go back to our IntelliJ. And here, if you see, this is our this is running, right? We don't have to change, make any changes here. But the changes we are going to make is in the question service. So let's run, run question service because the quiz service will not run because we have, we have not done the changes yet. So let's run the question service and see if this works. Now, first of all, even if you uh, run this, it will not register. Let me just show you that once. So I'll just run this code. Uh, it will take some time to load. And you can see it is running on 8080 port number. But if I go back to Eureka server, you can see it is not registered. Even if I refresh, it's not registered. So how do we do that? So the first thing you do is you go to your POM file. If you remember, when we were creating this project, we have added two more dependencies. One is your Eureka server or Eureka client, and second is your OpenFane. So we're not using OpenFane at this point. We are using the Eureka client. So let's uncomment this, and it will take some time to load it. So refresh. So you can see loading done. Now, this particular project, which is our question service, we have added a Eureka client. That's the first change you have to make. Let's restart and let's see if that works. Again, sometimes we learn from trial error, right? Uh, there's no problem. You can see this is important. This is the, the discovery client, right? So we have done this. So registration status is okay, or it's in good status. Let's refresh this and see. Okay, can you see that? We got it. We got one application registered. Now, which, which is this application? We don't have any idea. And actually, we know because we have run the question service. But what's the name of it? We, we want a good name for it, right? So what I will do is I will go back to my application.properties. And here, I will say spring.application.name. I will say this is my question service. And save this. Restart. And go back here. Let's refresh. And you can see we got it. So we got question service registered. And the beauty is, if you run this with a multiple instance, we have only one instance now, what I will do is, I will just go to the configuration. Remember, we have also ran this with a different port number. Let's run that one. So now we are basically trying to run two instances of question service. And if you go back here, and if you refresh, can you see that? We got two instances. And we also specify here. So this is on port number 8081. The second, the first service is on default port number, which is 8080. So yeah, that's how thing works. You know, it's it's awesome. So we got two two connections here, and now basically your service, basically your quiz service, should be able to find it. But again, the problem is, even if your quiz service, let's go back to our quiz service and let's see what's wrong there. I know we are working with multiple projects. So at this point, we are currently shuffling between three projects. The quiz project, the question service, I mean the quiz service, the question service, and the service registry. So if you go to your quiz service, we want to say that this particular create quiz is going to search about question service, right? And then we mentioned if you can register yourself to Eureka server, you can search it. But how are you going to do that? How do I request? And that's where there's a concept of Fang. So we'll try to configure this and make it work with the help of Fang. Now how exactly thing works, that we'll see in the next video.